thanks for joining us today. As I said, my name is Bobby Egan, and today we're going to do a collage. Now, the, the theme is around the world. This picture is um, sort of a, a, a homage to the Ukraine, where, as it turns out, the Ukraine is the third largest producer of pumpkins. And I kind of felt as we're coming into the um, fall season, it might be nice to do something that has a fall image. But what we're going to do is take different papers, and I hope you had a chance to gather some magazine papers or um, some of these, like this, for example, is the inside of an envelope. I have some newsprint up here. I actually made some paper um, with crayon and, a, and construction paper, different magazine pages. I also have some calendar pages. I just kind of looked around the house to see what was available, and I just pulled some papers together. Now, one of the things about the, um, this particular image is that uh, the, the Ukraine is has a um, mountain system called the Carpathian Mountains, and they have one of the highest peaks is 6,614 feet at the highest point in Ukraine. And from what I understand and what I read, that makes Ukraine a really popular skiing and hiking destination. It's I saw some pictures of the Ukraine and it's absolutely beautiful. So what I wanted to do today was in addition to featuring the Ukraine and their, their pumpkin production and the fall season, just to uh, do it in the form of a collage where I hope all of you had had some time to get some different colored papers together and we can, um, we can get started. So, I also, I also did another one, it's a little simpler. And so don't feel like you have to do exactly the same thing, but just keep in mind that our theme is a mountain range. And I had done a real quick sketch. So you can see this is, this is what I based it on. And I just marked the colors, like what the colors might be if I put them all together. So what I want everybody to do is whatever blank piece of paper you have that you want to work on, and you could use a colored piece as well. I'm going to just lay out the drawing here. For what I want you all to do is just think about shapes for a moment. And we're going to look at the right side of our page. Now I'm left-handed, so you might want to do the opposite. But I'm just going to draw a, a curve going from one side to the other. And that's the curve that's down here. And if you can, if you, as you see, there's a bunch of just different shapes on this paper. And don't worry about it being exact. You're just gonna be putting in the different color shapes. Now this one is, let's like, say, let's pretend these are indicating trees or bushes in the background. As we go further back into space, we're going to just create a series of curves. If you look at this curve right here, it's sort of in the middle of the page and it just comes down and it, it lands on top of this block here. Then we're going to, if you see over here, you can see that it's about two thirds up and this is where I'm gonna indicate the mountains. And mountains are, are peaks and valleys and the hot, their highs and lows. And it doesn't have to be exact, So, but just so you're indicating, these are where your collage points are gonna go. Now, as far as the tree goes, the tree's in the foreground. So I'm gonna do that last, but basically a tree is, if you wanna think of it as a, the trunk comes up and it branches out and you don't have to worry about it being exactly the same, but if you think about it in terms of being uh, Y shapes, like these are the branches that come out and just make them different Ys. And that can just indicate your trees. The last thing that we have here is a pumpkin. And I wanted to celebrate it. Pumpkins are kind of round, but something you should remember about pumpkins is that they, the, the, the um, stem doesn't just pop out of the top. The stem, is, the stem can be anywhere you want. 
but it usually comes out of a center circle. So if you make a circle and then you kind of just can put a stem right here, I happen to have a pumpkin here. I actually grew this. So you can see what a pumpkin looks like. This one's not orange, it's, it's called a Kakai pumpkin, so it's a little bit different, but you can see that the stem comes out of the, the top and the middle, but it's not just on the edge. So when you draw your circle, just keep that in mind that your stem is going to come out here. Now, if you look at pumpkin shapes, keeping it really simple, they just have ribs around them. So don't worry about that for now. We can work on that later. So once you have your drawing done, we can start, I'm going to use a glue stick. You can use glue, but the um, glue stick works pretty well. And the way I have thought about this was that I'm going to put in the, the um, I'm going to work from top to bottom. And what's going to happen is you're going to be covering up some of your lines. But I have different kinds of papers. And I'm going to stand up for this. You can't really see through, but what you want to do, you're just going to follow me. You're going to tear. You're going to tear across where your lines are, and then you're going to, like, if you're going to come up, follow your mountains down, and keep coming. Don't worry if it's not perfect. So I kind of have a placement for where I want my sky to go. You can see that it overlaps the edges too. We don't have to worry about that for now either. We can either cut it or wait till we're done and we can take it off with a ruler. But the way I'm going to apply this, now you can use any, any of your lighter colors that you want here because we're indicating that it's the sky. So if it's, um, if it's a dark color, it would be nighttime possibly. You can use whatever your imagination tells you to do. So I'm just putting down my sky area. And if you have a ruler, which I have somewhere, my desk is kind of a mess, you can just kind of rip it off. But this is just a hard edge thing that I have. So there I have my sky. I can still see my trees are a little bit, and maybe I don't want to forget exactly where they were, but you can always redraw them later and put your, put your um, leaves back in or your branches back in later so that you can remember where they go. So the next section, some crayons, and I made some scribbly lines. So you could make your own patterns as well. I also made some purple color by putting blue and pink and uh, different shades of blues and pinks to make a purple pattern. So if I wanted to do that for my mountains, I could. I also have, just if you're interested, I have, I took a, I have a calendar page and I could take my scissors and I could just make a fun kind of cloud shape with my scissors and I could just glue that down to be a cloud. And I'm just plopping that on there. When you look at clouds, usually it's darker at the bottom and lighter at the top. So you, you can put clouds in the top, you can do whatever you want. But so for my mountains, you wanna make sure it's a little bit, it's darker than the background. And just one thing to keep in mind when you're doing a landscape, that the foreground is darker than the background. So mountains aren't really purple, but when, they're look, when you look at them from a distance, they're kind of a bluish purple. You can also use, I, I found, this is great paper. You can use this as the inside of a, uh, an envelope that I got in the mail, and it has this nice pattern on it. You can use that for mountains as well. So the next thing we have to do is we have to figure out what shape our mountains are going to be in. Now you can kind of you can kind of look at this and kind of use your eye to determine it but you don't have to be locked into anything. I'm just gonna kind of determine what my line is. And I'm, I'm tearing the paper. When I tear the paper, it makes a little bit of a white edge. 
which could be good or and if you tear it the other direction it doesn't now so you see i have a mountain range ready to go and i have to think about okay my my curve is going to be here and it comes down here and it's roughly over here so you might want to just take this part and you're going to be cutting that down as well just I'm, I'm just ripping it if you have a pair of scissors you can cut it too i'm not worrying so much about the bottom because i'm going to be overlapping it and as far as the top goes if you have something that looks like a jagged kind of mountain range that's good enough if you feel like you need to see what you're doing you can kind of lift up the paper a little bit to get an idea of where your lines are so that you can do that for the next part of it so i have all i have to do now is stick this on and i have my my glue stick which i just missed doesn't have to be the whole thing covered you can just do like around the edges and i'm just going to look at it and i'm placing it right about where i want it to go again you can see that i'm covering up the tree lines but I, and i don't want to forget where the tree lines go so i can just quickly put them back in it's again it, it can be anything at the end of the um when we get all of our background colors filled in we can put those in last and they don't have to be in an exact spot so the next part of our carpathian mountain picture has a um, kind of a rusty a rusty background so i'm looking for a bit of a rust colored paper and i think the last time i didn't really have a rust color so i took a piece of, of construction paper and you can do any color you want if you have it doesn't have to be rust but if you have something that's sort of like a mid a mid a mid-range color you don't want something too light or too dark just keep in mind that you're going to be going from lighter to darker so that that so that's this color here will obviously be in contrast with the background and then the foreground needs to pop out a little bit from it as well so i have this shape here that is like like sort of like a curve so if i hold my paper up i'm kind of tearing along that line don't worry about it being perfect doesn't have to be okay um does if everyone gathered together their their pattern papers the first thing i did was i laid across the background area in a really really light color so if you want to take a piece of paper and just lay it across the bottom if you did your pencil lines you'll kind of see where your mountain range ends your background if i pull this off you'll see that it's a little bit of an overlap so don't don't worry about the bottom so much and then when we get to the second stage where you do your um mountain range i can talk again about these are the colors this is actually the original one i did it has the inside of an envelope as a background just something i pulled out of the mail there's i also you can also if you have i this is purple wrapping paper i just did some squiggly lines and crayon you can make something out of that what i decided to use was a piece of paper that i just scribbled some uh, blue and pink crayon on and then i got it to i just glued it down i all i did was i just ripped a jagged edge to represent the mountains it's not exactly like my drawing, which you can see here, it doesn't really matter because it's it's a collage and it's just representational of the mountain range. So if you want to do the jagged edge, I just tore it with my hand. I tore it across the page 
and then I um, glued it down. I turned it over and glued it back with the glue stick on the back. So if you look at this next section here, this is, I didn't have a it's sort of a rusty color. One of the things that I indicated when I first started was that I had kind of looked at it. I'll turn this over so you can see. I looked at this and I said, well, this is white. This is sort of purple. This is like a rusty color. I have some red. Yeah, I just indicated real quickly what everything looked like. It was very rough. And so I'm kind of using that as a guide for color. So if um, going back into a landscape, it's lighter as it gets closer to the bottom, to the foreground, it's going to get darker and maybe more detailed as well. So going back to this picture, I took a piece of, it's, I had a piece of, um, it's sort of like a reddish orange construction paper. If you found a, a magazine page or a color that you like, you can just fill it in with this area here. And right now, I'm not worrying so much about the bottom, just kind of following the top along my pencil lines. I'm just kind of tearing it as I go. And then when I'm satisfied with where it is, I turn it over and glue it down. So I'm going to keep going, but if you need me to stop, just, just, just uh, send me a message, okay? Because I don't want to go too fast, but um, we have a couple more elements we have to get in before we're done. So when I looked at my, the one I did before, I had some yellow and some lighter colors here. This one I don't think worked as well because it was too similar. So I put a couple of lighter blobs up here to make it separate a little bit more. But if you have this area here, if I indicate it was yellow, red, and yellow, it's sort of, um, this might actually be darker than this, and this would be brighter. So if you have your next shapes, and if you, you can watch this and see how I was putting down the shapes, right now I'm going to go through my pile of colors there's a magazine page, it's got a nice rich gold color. And I'm gonna put it right here. So you can see that you rip up whatever you don't want. And I can just take my pencil and I can see that here's this parts here, but I'm gonna be making like shapes like that. So if I, if I tore this, if I tore this down here on the side, to get a straight edge. And then I'm going to, I can just indicate with a pencil what I want. Um, if you can see that I'm lifting up and I'm kind of looking here what I'm doing, I'm just guessing. It doesn't have to be perfect. And then I kind of like, okay, there's some, shrubby bumpy things here now if you want you can you can cut it with a pair of scissors you can cut these shapes out with a pair of scissors too they don't have to be perfect if you want to make some nice little like rounded shapes just to indicate we're just indicating a kind of a tree line i guess and then you can cut out the bottom too I'm not worrying about the bottom so much because I'm hoping to overlap it. But if you want to just do it like that. So it's, um, it's got the kind of bumpiness I like. If you want to make it a little bit more detailed, you can. And then I'm just going to take my glue stick and I'm going to just go around the back. I'm not worrying too much about the center so much. And I'm going to place that in this spot right here. And there's another kind of goldish area here. There's also an area back here. And I, I apologize because when you look at that, where that is, it should probably be behind this. And that's going to be a redder color and maybe darker. I have 
I have this cinnamon roll from a magazine page that might be kind of interesting there. I can turn it upside down and get this darker side um, to overlap here. And again, it's just, it's really, you're looking at a little space, a little space like right around here. And it doesn't have to be anything more than just creating a shape. I'm going to take my scissors again. Maybe I'll draw it. You can draw it first if you feel more comfortable. You can draw some like circle -y shapes. And then you can just cut them out. And this time, I'm going to lift this up a little bit. The glue doesn't dry super fast, so I could slip this one in. And I'm going to stick it behind this one. So that's going to be another shrub kind of tree line area. And then I have this one last bit here and I have that it's yellow. I have more yellow that I can play with or I can, you can make a yellow or I have this calendar page that has some nice yellow in it. So maybe I'll, maybe I'll make it with this. And again, I'm kind of lining it up on the edge. I kind of see what edge I have. And I'm basically not worrying so much about the top. I can make it up and then I'm going to just kind of go across the bottom. So again, you can you can rip it or tear it or you want to cut it, anything you want to do. And then I'm going to glue that down. Now we're starting to cover up our tree, but don't worry because we will it's, we will restore that as soon as we get all of our background colors on here. So you can see that now I have kind of a background shape. And if I lift up the paper a little bit, I see that there's a bit of an arch. I don't have to worry so much because I'm going to be overlapping it. But if you if you want to be more exact, you can cut along that line and or, or just give it a little bit of a seam allowance, a little bit like sewing. Okay, and now I'm going to glue this one in. This was a calendar page. So I got material, I got patterns and colors from all kinds of things, junk mail and um, calendars, and I made some. And so that's, that is now my tree line. And the next, the next big, the last, actually it's the last big pattern here is going to be this foreground area. And it's gonna be where, where the tree lies and where the pumpkin lies. So I had, I had to find like a green pattern, a green shape. I have some green here. I have some greens here. I'm just, I'm filling in the background shapes. So if you wanna just, this, this one's kind of green. It's not as green as it could be. It could be a little bit brighter. And if, if I don't, if I like it and it's not green enough or dark enough, I can just get out some crayons or magic markers and make it darker. That's a little too. I think I'm going to use this one. Let's see, this has like a kind of a nice edge to it too. So I can just bring that up and I'll just bring it down like that. And I'm going to... Um, I'm gonna rip this one because it'll give it, if you see what I'm ripping, it makes this nice little white edge. Just drew, I drew, I drew a line across with my pencil and I'm just kind of pulling the paper across that line. And I can put it into position here. Now this is gonna be my foreground and I obviously am gonna be tearing that part off figure it's going to be like that. So I can take whatever you want to use for the foreground. 
and I'm just going to glue it down. I don't want to make too much glue here. So you can also, if you want to, you can use a ruler for this. I can't, it's on my desk somewhere. I'm just cutting the edges off with a straight edge. I'm just holding it, holding the paper down and I'm pulling the paper away. And I can do that for the bottom too, but I'm gonna glue it on first. So you can see that it's not exactly perfect, but I'm lining it up and I'm, I'm dragging it across and then I'm going to put glue on it and glue it down. I use an old calendar. Um, I don't recommend using a new one, but they're, they have calendars have such pretty pictures. Sometimes I save them and use the pictures for other things. So, okay, so that's my foreground. Now I can turn my page over and see where I'm overlapping. You can see right here is the end of my page. So I can just grab that and I'm just pulling it across. It doesn't quite go right across. So that way I have a rough edge. Now, so you can see what I have right now. I have my sky. If you have, if you want to add a little bit of a cloud, if you have a cloud you want to cut out and stick on, you can. I made my background with the Carpathian Mountains. It's sort of a purplish color. I filled it in with crayon. It was a white piece of paper and I didn't, I had, if you wanted to use purple or blue or whatever, you can, but you can also make your own. So I made my own. I have this rusty color, which I think it could be maybe a little bit, a little bit rustier. It could be whatever you want. You could, you can color it in. You could do whatever you want to make that um, a little bit um, stronger or darker. You could play with it, whatever you want to do. And then I took some magazine pages, and actually this was a calendar page. This was a an ad. Now you can see that it used to be a um, a dessert, but you can't even tell what it is anymore. And here's some yellow magazine paper with type on it, which is kind of fun because it's it's a magazine page, but it's actually being used as something else. And then here's my calendar page that I used. Um, this basically pulling across the line, and it's a it's got a lot of green in it, and it's got a lot of grass in it. So once all of the background areas are in we can focus our attention on the pumpkin and the tree. So again, think of the, think of the tree as a trunk. It doesn't have to be, you can just redraw it again. It's, it doesn't have to be perfect. And think about your pumpkin area. Your pumpkin is gonna be like the focal point of your picture and it's gonna be pretty big. When I first did, when I first did this one, I kind of thought this looked like a basketball and it's probably because it's a solid color and the picture I was looking at the trunk, the, the stem was kind of hanging down from there. I have, um, you could also, you could also take a, if you have a color printer or a picture of a pumpkin, you could cut that out and put that on as well. So you're, you're, you could actually use a real pumpkin if you found one that was just the right size that you could use, you can do that too. So that's also something else you could try. So I think before we do the pumpkin, which is gonna be last, we should probably look at our tree and try to lay that in. If you look at this, this original thing, I just took, I just ripped pieces of a darker color and I've stuck them and it's basically a long, a long strand of torn paper. And then what I just kept making my little V shapes. So, and then the trunk got a little bit wider at the bottom and you can see where I have the torn paper. It kind of gives it this white edge. So you can try that as well. Now I have um, dark papers. We're not, I didn't have them in a solid color supply. Here's also a pumpkin. I printed this off and I have a black and white printer, but you could probably color that in orange and use that if you want as your final pumpkin. If you don't feel comfortable drawing one or if you would read, it's, it's, it can be fun too, just to color in the pumpkin. You can color it in. 
and you can cut it out. You can um, make different colors. Like this crayon, crayon takes a little bit of a while to fill in. So if you have magic marker, you could do that as well. And then the, uh, the stem of the pumpkin is sort of a, a brownish color. So you could very easily color that whole thing in and then you could cut that out and stick that on. I think mine, this one is looking a little bit um, pale. So I would, um, I could get a magic marker and brighten it up to, if you have, if you want to do that. Otherwise you can use torn paper to create the same thing. So we can think about using that as our final pumpkin. But for now, I want to focus on the tree. Well, one of the things that, um, for, for color of the tree, I have, here's another, just a calendar page. And you, you might not find, you could use a solid color, you could make your own color, but these really dark areas are the ones that I'm going to be using. And I'm thinking about in, in terms of what the tree shape is, um, not worrying too much about being 100% accurate because it's, it's really hard to do that, but it's also not necessary because what you're doing is recreating the collage and it's just a, it's just symbolizing a tree it's not really you're not drawing it's um you're actually creating no trees are going to look alike and you're never going to do it the same twice because you're going to do it differently every time so i'm kind of just going to lay in my trees you can start at the bottom but you'll see that you don't always have the right shapes. So if I started at the bottom here, trying to come up the line with that, come up the side of this tree, I'm using my glue stick, I'm gonna put it here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna build all these dark colors and then I'm going to start fanning them out as I go. Okay, so you can, um, when you're running out of places to put the glue, you might want to do it on another piece of paper so you don't get glue all over your picture. Okay, so I'm just putting one there. So I have, I have a bunch of dark colors to fill in. So I'm just going to keep doing that, and you can keep doing it too until we get that whole tree filled in. I'm just going to keep taking the dark colors out of the picture. And I'm just going to use them to make my tree shape. And I'm, if you think of it, maybe like a puzzle shape where you're kind of just going up the tree side, so you're just filling in, filling in those pieces until you have what you need. So right now, I have this, I'm trying to fill in this area here. I have a little bit of a, a trees have the, the trunk part is, you, a lot of times has these roots that go into the ground. And I'm also filling in the dark shape. And you can see it's not really, it's, it's not really 100% um, accurate. I'm just kind of filling it in filling in where I need to, to create that trunk. So I have, I have the edges here, and I'm slowly growing up the tree. And again, if you tear it a certain, if you tear it in one direction, you'll get a white line. If you don't want a white line, you can cut it out, or you can um, cut it, turn it in, around and do it in a different direction. So um, I'm gonna keep filling it in, and you keep filling yours in until we have enough material to finish our tree trunk and then we'll final we'll finalize this with a, a pumpkin shape so i'm going to keep laying in if i have like little strips little strips of um, dark color i could just stick them stick them where they need to go like i have um here's another one i could just put it in it's almost like a patchwork quilt so you're just kind of laying in different colors i need i need more dark colors so i have to here's a, here's a nice piece of dark area 
I'm, I'm going to continue to do this. You continue to do yours. My hands are getting sticky too. This is not a, um, this can be a little bit messy. Here's like, here's like, okay, here's a piece. Something like I'm trying to fit it in like a puzzle. I don't, it's a kind of, it's kind of wide, right? So I need to maybe make it a little bit thinner. That's, that sort of works. So I'll stick that on. makes like a little V. I'm just using up all my shapes as I as I climb up the tree. And as I start to the basic trunk is here and now I'm starting to come out with the branches. So I don't need as thick. I don't need something as thick as it was before. And I don't really need all this white space either. So I'm just gonna tear that off. And this can be a branch. You think about think about um, trees. They kind of reach up, reach up to the sun for light. And because it's autumn, most of the leaves are on the ground. I, I don't know where I live. They're they're about thirty percent or forty percent turned. And I'm just going to keep making branches and bringing it up. So here's, here's another one. My line's right over here. And if you, need, if you don't have any lines, just stick them anywhere. They're, um, they, they just, the whole point is you want a tree branch that's reaching up to the sky and it's forming a V shape. So you see I have a V shape here and I'm covering up my mountain range in the background. And I'm just going to keep doing that. I still have my dark color paper. You can pull it and then you can just figure out where you want it to go. Should I put it here? Uh, maybe I need to cut a little bit of it off. Might be a little bit bumpy like this. I can take my scissors and make it a little bit smoother. And when I, when I think about where I want it to be, I'm just gonna get some glue and glue it down. Okay, I'm gonna put this right over here. Now, you can also, I, I kind of just put that there. Okay, now my hands are my hands are really sticky now. So I'm gonna I did about four four major branches and I want to put some little stems, little little tinier branches to make my V shapes. You can you can put it down first to see how you like it and then you can just glue it if it's too thick or too thin you can make changes to it before you paste it down kind of makes it kind of makes a nice pattern by itself and whoops I'm, my fingers are sticking to the paper i'm putting it i'll put a little v-shape there
I have um, a couple more to do. Here's one. I'll take this little, this little one block here. And I'll include it. There. Okay. Um, I'm looking at my page. It's like, well, I could, I could keep, I could put another branch here. I could put another branch. Like, if it doesn't look quite right to you, this one is okay. But I, I can see that maybe there'd be another branch over this way, or maybe this way. It doesn't. It's whatever, whatever looks good to you is absolutely perfect. Trees in nature are um, never the same. I think the important thing is to think that they just reach up to the sky and they reach out to the sun. Now, um, the last part of this is gonna be making the pumpkin. And like, as I said, if you wanted to print a black and white pumpkin, you can always do that later, but, um, and cut it out and just paste it down. Or you can just have a color picture of a pumpkin. I also thought, well, maybe, if there was like a foam underneath, it would be like a 3D pumpkin. You could do all kinds of fun things. I didn't make a jack-o'-lantern because really what I wanted to emphasize was more fall and not so much Halloween. But so because we are going to, um, I'll show you what I did to make a um, regular pumpkin. I have a, another piece of paper and if you have something orange or if you wanna make something orange, you can do that. And I'm looking at my shape. I'm gonna like with, with, it's probably about two or three inches. You can even do like this and you could put your paper down and you can cut out a half circle. And that's gonna make a round circle shape when you open it up. And you have like a nice round shape and you could put that down. So if you wanted to try that, um, I'm just putting some glue on it and I'm going to stick it down. You can see I, I made a little bit of a mess, sorry. The, um, the glue is um, all over the place at this point. So uh, we need to make a stem but before we do that, when you think about a pumpkin, pumpkins aren't really flat. That's one of the things I didn't like about this one is that it was kind of a flat shape with no dimension. This one, you can see this pumpkin, a real pumpkin has um, light and shadow. And we're not gonna worry too much about how to create a light and shadow. But if you wanted to give it a little bit of dimension, you could pick another color. Um, a lighter pumpkin color or something in the orange family, and you could paste it. I'm looking for something a little bit orangey. And um, let's see, well, this is kind of orange, it's a little bit dark. If you wanted to take your pencil, indicate where you want to put your stem. I'm going to put my stem here, my, and I'm going to just draw it in real quick. That's where my stem is going to go. And then pumpkins. Pumpkins kind of go around that stem. The stem is like the center. So I have an area here. Maybe I want to add to give it a little bit of dimension. I'm going to rip out this little piece of orange right here. Okay, I have a little, see this little stalk here? 
you could you could continue to take um, different colors if you want to have your pumpkin be different shades of orange and gold. I already mm -hmm. made a little colorful pumpkin. You already made a pumpkin? Yes. It, yes. Good. Yeah. So I'm gonna make a, I'm gonna make a stock. I'm gonna make a little stock here. See, I, I, I kind of have it going this way, but it doesn't really matter. I'm going to um, taking this. I had a little scrap of this color. I'm going to just stick it on there, and I'm just going to put it there. Now, to me, it's not really dark enough, so I can get a crayon or magic marker, and I can make it darker too. I can just color over it if you want. So that's my pumpkin shape. Um, what the last thing that I did on the last the last one I did was I put. I just took little scraps of paper in reds and oranges and yellows, and I just stuck them all over it as if they were leaves. And that's the last thing that you need to do if you wanted to create that um, impression of leaves. Um, again, I kind of suggest getting a piece of paper to glue on because the glue surface is on your page. Or, or, or you, you could do it like that as well. You could, you could just take a dab of glue and put, stick a piece of paper on top of it. Uh, you could do that as well. But otherwise, you can take your piece of paper, if you have a piece of paper, and then you could put, you can glue the back of well, it. I, I think it's taking us too long. It's 622. Okay. You have until 630, don't you? Oh, I'm already finished. Can I leave? If you want to. <laughs> Thank you for coming. Thank you. See you next time. I hope so. Thank Bye. You. Bye now. Okay, so anyway, you want to keep, for, for those of you that are still interested in finishing or working on this some more, we can um, just continue. This is... Um, somewhat easier if you just want to make a spot and stick your color on there it goes a little bit faster um, and whatever little whatever little color you want to put down i do have some these are if you think of these as leaves in the trees there's also some leaves on the on the ground but you can just put some different pieces of paper on the ground as well. I'm just putting a little dab of glue and putting little pieces of ripped paper at random to indicate the leaves. And I did it on top as well. And the one I did prior to this I just kind of filled it in randomly without any real rhyme or reason until I until I until I thought it was done and then I stopped. So you can you can fill it up as much as you want. You can make this really really full, and or you can make it very bare. It's up to you. I have all kinds of here, and now I'm just basically sticking them, sticking them wherever. I mean, if you were really, really into it, you could actually cut out leaves, but I kind of like the quality of just having these little random scraps of paper representing the leaves. I think it's fun. And I have um, an endless supply of little scraps of paper at this point, so let's use them up. Um, again, the pumpkin, pumpkin shape. When you, um, Get to a point where you think you've done enough. I, you, you have an option. I, I did it on one and I didn't do it on the second one. I actually took a black Sharpie and I outlined it. 
outline the shapes um, to make them stand out more. And you could do that as well if you wanted to. When you're when you're finished, when you're finished decorating your tree, um, I have this really nice white line here, but I kind of think that I would like to make this stand out a little bit. So I'm going around the outline of it. I have a leaf, a leaf that fell off of something, so I'll stick it back up here. Doesn't want to stick. Stick, stick, stick. Okay. Okay. So I'm um, I'm just kind of going around, and I'm making an outline, which kind of pulls it in front of the background. And this is sort of this is very close in um, tone so it doesn't pop out as much so if you if you feel like your your collage doesn't stand out as much you might want to take an outline of black or a dark color crayon or marker and just cover go over it like that like the same thing for the pumpkin here the stem the stem isn't really delineated that much. So I'm going to come around and make the pumpkin a little bit stronger with a marker. And all I'm doing is I'm just basically following an outline and keeping in mind that the stem is not on the top, but it's sort of indented a little bit. And all of these, all of these curved points come to where the stem lies. And then I'm also going around that. As far as the, um, this part, I'm, I kind of like that white line, so I'm gonna keep it, but maybe I would, maybe I would do this with the background. And then I kind of finish it like that. So I could keep, I could keep going on with, different leaves and different things. And um, if you wanted to add other elements, you could as well. The Carpathian Mountains in the background, I didn't put an outline around it because it's sort of way in the background and I don't want it to be too strong. If I put an outline around that, it might make it come forward and then it would not have the depth that we were trying to achieve. I think everyone did a great job and I really thank you all for coming. and. Um, Hopefully you can come to the next one. The next class that I'm going to be doing is going to be about negative space. And if you have never done anything with negative space, what it means is I'm going to start with something in the foreground that's going to be the paper. And as I go back into space, that's going to be colored. So you're going to learn to see it's going to be the opposite of something positive. Like this tree, for example, is a positive space. In a picture that's negative space, this would be the lightest color, the background, and everything else behind it would be darker. So it'll be a fun project. I hope you can all make it to that sometime in, I think, in the beginning of November. So thanks, thanks everybody for coming. I really appreciate it. You guys did a great job, and thank you for um, work doing this workshop with me. Have a great day. Bye, and thank you. Bye. Bye, Bye everybody. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye now.